Robin, uh, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Do you know, when I was a younger guy, I wanted to play the guitar and I wanted to play it right away. (laughs) And so I I got a $12 guitar Uh and uh, I got a book on how to play guitar and I learned three chords and... um, I was in business, Robin. I, I didn't. I did not have the instrument mastered, but I could go out and you know impress the girls. <laughs> oh well, yeah, that's I, great. And I, and I wasn't old enough, but I could even go down to the the corner tavern. I know you had taverns in Milwaukee, right? Yep. So still but, do. But in New York, we had one the the uh, the, uh, the Newbridge Inn Tavern. Anybody from the area might remember. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they let me play. And uh-huh. I played for tips. And so I, I literally went into a little business uh, as a guitar player. Uh, <laughs> our next guest sort of t- kind of talks about that whole idea that you don't have to master the whole thing. You can just micromaster. And I never heard the term before. Uh, maybe Robert Twigger uh, coined that phrase. He's an apprentice micromaster. He's an adventure traveler. He's a lecturer on risk management, polymathematics. Math- I don't even know what that is. Uh, anyway, we're going to here right now about his book micro mastery i put the cover of the book on the podcast so you can see what it looks like S- learn small learn fast and unlock your potential to achieve anything robert twigger good morning sir good morning so i hear what you're saying and you know what i always thought it was i thought it was just presumptuous like like i'm gonna go and be a guitar player even though i've i only really know three chords yeah, but this is this is how kind of the uh, the whole kind of the punk rock movement started with people just saying, "Oh, right, come on, right. we don't have to follow the rules." <laughs> right, right. And right. I, I just think that, that that learning has kind of been hijacked by uh, by academia, and we've we've got to kind of you know take 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 it back and make it fun again. Now, is that true um, across the board, or are there some? Uh um, let, let's see what I want to say. Some areas where you really should take the time to to learn the ten thousand hours worth of whatever. Well, maybe neuroscience or brain surgery. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. But uh, no. But even in that, even in that area, I discovered there was a Nobel Prize winner whose mother had been a lace maker, and he then got a Nobel Prize prize in medicine through advanced surgery techniques, and he had learned to stitch incredibly small stitches when he was a kid. So you just don't know where these micro mastery techniques can actually kick in in some kind of really serious or specialized area. I suppose there's two reasons to want to master something or micro master something. One is to make money, and the other is maybe for enjoyment. An artist, for example, who has no intent of selling the art might become really, really good at, I don't know, pencil or, or, or just one type of medium yeah. or something, right? Yeah, I mean, it, and it, it's it's kind of it's fun to learn things when you do it in in this way, where you get a payback, and you know, I, I talk about kind of the show off potential of things. I think too many too many courses are really po faced, and they don't actually give you something that you can you can then show to other people, and that's kind of like the way kids kids learn. And I, I think that uh, yes, I right that, that's where the enjoyment comes in. Oh, uh, and- and sometimes, you know, people don't realize uh, what their passion is. They are adept at doing some, uh, something. They might just be cooking for their family or uh, they might just be uh, 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 scuba diving for fun. But your book takes us out of that realm of fun. You you uh, make people want to keep it fun, but you also want to make them delve into whatever it is they love further so they can make this their passion in their career if they choose that's right and i think that unless you you really focus on something for even just a small amount of time you can't actually discover that it's a passion and um the problem is when things are presented as taking loads and loads of time you just don't focus any time on it at all so you never really get past that first hurdle so, what kind of things will I learn in the book? What, uh, micro master. Oh, cr- oh, craft beer you got in here. I want to learn how to do that. Do yeah. That. Craft beer making. <laughs> yeah. Um, making the perfect daiquiri uh, cocktail, if you're in that kind of drinking phase. But um, all kinds of things. Stand up surfing, balancing rounded stones on the beach, making a perfect omelet. 
uh, climbing a rope. Wait a minute. Um, you can you can teach me how to juggle? All kinds of stuff. You, it says juggle four balls. Juggling is in there. Four ball juggling, yeah, which That's... is even harder than three ball juggling. So I thought, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> yeah, I never even mastered the three balls. <laughs> uh, you really inspire people. Uh, <laughs> you really inspire people not to be lazy, though, because sometimes people will try something, it won't work, they give up, and then they become lazy. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I think that one of the things I've done is to break each micro mastery down, and one of the six kind of bits of the structure is what I call the rub pat barrier, and that's when you know when you're trying to rub your head and pat your stomach or the other way around it's really hard at first and Mm -hmm. and often when we learn a skill two parts of it the two bits two new skills if you like they pull against each other and that's a kind of barrier that we have to break through and but once you know that barrier is there and you can identify it you can put a bit extra effort and just sort of break through and i think that's a kind of key thing you know once you know that's going to happen you can break through so is it like parlor tricks? I mean, uh, some of these things look like they might be fun, like at a party, or I can juggle, or um, something like yeah, that. Yeah, some of them, some of them kind of have that kind of impressive life hack quality to them, like the three card trick. But they all have a kind of um, they send out kind of feelers into the bigger area. So. So, for example, right, you could yeah. just leave it at making a perfect omelette, but it, it, it has information that helps you master the whole field. See, and I was thinking about that with a, a foreign language. Like, if you if you could master, like, like essential sentences or something like that, and, and then I, I think it might grow into actually being fluent in a language. Yeah, I mean, that's how... I mean, I got the idea I used for the language learning from the ancient, an ancient sort of Jesuit method of learning languages where you memorize poetry. But in this case, I took the, the Marseillaise, the French national anthem from Casablanca. I don't know if you remember in the movie, they all break out into this national anthem. You can, you can sort of sing along on YouTube with that mm-hmm. and actually memorize it. And so if you ever find yourself in Paris alone in a cafe with a nasty waiter, you can serenade him <laughs> and uh, be treated very well. <laughs> Uh, your book uh, uh, progresses from beginning to end. You have uh, different parts in there. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wanted to bring it to a conclusion, a slightly more substantial conclusion, because I think that micromastery leads us into a more polymathic way of life, you know, multi-skilled. Um, and I'm a big believer that uh, really our, our, kind of, our human nature is that we, we want to be good at lots of different things and that we're forced to become specialists. But what I've discovered that even specialists import extra skills into their lives to um, make breakthroughs and get ahead even, or even just get another perspective. So the last part of the book is about, yeah, try to be more polymathic in your life. Uh, the the uh, the book is called Micro Mastery. Learn small, learn fast, and unlock your potential to achieve anything. Robert Twigger wrote the book. The philosophy is really uh, it's kind of like mind op- opening or whatever. It gives you it, it opens up a lot. Uh, the book itself, however, will teach you some specific things. How many things do you have in the book? I've got I've got thirty nine. So there's a big choice, but hopefully people will think up some of their own as well. Because every time I give a talk on it, I, people tell me new ones. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm wondering about some of the uh, the things like art. Like, how do you? Or I mean, poetry. It's not just writing it, but so you know that it's good. I, I'm always a. It's always a mystery to me. I can go to an art museum, and uh, I have no idea what's good. Because that, what's good to me is not good to the experts. They'll say, oh, that's, that's not good. <laughs> 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 but I think a lot of modern art is, I mean, it, it is kind of rubbish, isn't it? I mean, yes. I could just admit that. Well, you and I agree, but, <laughs> but, but the guy who gives you the tour. We agree, yeah. <laughs> the guy who gives you the tour. But um, even... The, but there's something empowering about kind of stuff that's no good. Like some of Picasso's sketches are so fast and rapid, you can copy them. And that feels pretty good that you can do something that's almost as good as Picasso. <laughs> so I think that that's a, that's a kind of empowering thing to, to do. I guess so, yeah. I, I like this approach, though. Yeah. Do, you, do you use this yourself in other areas of your life? I, I, I use it now as my method when, I, when, I'm, when I'm learning something new. So I just... Um, I break it. I mean, I've, I, I, I've got into doing photography, and so I, I thought, okay, what is the fun part of photography I like? And then I, 
I you know break it down into in, into the into sort of one element, which I think is the you know for me it was using a medium format camera because that was that had more show off potential than a thirty five yeah. millimeter camera. Well, so I, I, yeah, I, I really use I use it. Yeah, I can see that if you learn just enough to get going. You can learn more along the way. It's it's mm-hmm. uh, it makes sense to me. Uh, in, in except for brain surgery, you would want to learn everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you learn on the job with brain surgery. <laughs> uh, well, and that's why they have what do you call them, apprentices or whatever they call the people who look over your yeah, shoulder. Yeah. Right, that's part of that too. Yep. Uh, yeah. I love this idea. Yeah. A micro mystery. I have a copy of the book, and you can call me if you want the copy that was sent to me. The rest of us have to go buy it. I found it on Amazon. Do you have a website? Uh, yeah, I have a website, robertstwigger.com. Um, if there's more information there, we can get it on Amazon or, or probably in a bookstore, hopefully. That's, that's easy. You know, by the way, when we make our own websites, I kind of did it the micromastery way. I learned enough to put something on, and then little by little, I'm starting to figure out how to do links and all that other <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, you, you are natural. I can tell that. You're a natural <laughs> No, you know what? I call it faking it. I feel like I'm faking it when I do that faking stuff. Faking it, yeah. But but there's a, big, there's a big element of that, and I think that that needs to be acknowledged, you know, that often, you know, actors turn out to be really good at certain things. I remember reading about Robert De Niro becoming a fantastic boxer because he, he, was, he was so good at faking it. Um, Is that right? They, so wow. I think that needs to be acknowledged. Well, they say yeah. fake it till you make it, right? That's what they say. Yeah. Fake it till yeah. you make it. I think, men, do, yeah. I think men fake it more than women, except in one area, than women fake it. <laughs> 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 Boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, uh, Robert, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, Micro Mastery is the book. Robert Twigger is the author, robertwigger.com is the website. Thank you, Robert. Thanks a lot for having me. All right, Thanks. you're welcome. We will take a break and be right back. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352 629 2440. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352 629 2440, or online at Powell Gene, G E N E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Gene is a proud United States veteran. The NFL alumni is sponsoring a Clays for Kids, a sporting event to benefit the Marion County. 